Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Virtual Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Pastor Gilbert A. Ruffin, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, and prepare your heart and mind to hear a word from the Lord. Welcome to Christ Our Redeemer. Christ our Redeemer. Welcome to Christ our Redeemer. Well, praise the Lord, Christ our Redeemer. Thank God for you joining us this Sunday. We thank God for allowing us this uh, time together in the virtual space and by virtual means, having a, a worship by virtual means, uh, by which we don't have to come out in the cold and winter weather that most of us are experiencing here on the east coast of the United States. Uh, and we're thanking God that you joined us for worship today, regardless of where you're joining from, from around the world. We're thanking that you tuned in to hear a word from the Lord. We're praising God and thanking God for you today. We're praising God and thanking God for the opportunity to worship one more time. We're praising and thanking God for the word that's going to be shared, the fellowship of saints that we're having even in the virtual means, in the virtual space. We thank God as we continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of, of God here on earth. We thank God for preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Somebody ought to give God praise today. Somebody ought to trust and believe God today that as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise, that God's going to show up and show out. Somebody ought to give God praise today, knowing that the Holy Ghost is already here, knowing that the Holy Spirit is in us and is about to come and burst forth into a dying world, letting them know that Jesus lives, knowing that because the Spirit of God is in you, that you are sons and daughters of the Most High God, that you are ambassadors for the kingdom of God, he our own earth. Somebody ought to believe God today that somebody's going to be saved. Somebody ought to believe God today that someone's going to be set free. Somebody ought to believe God today that somebody's life is going to be transformed and that they too will become sons and daughters of God. They too will become ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I can't wait to see what God's about to do. I can't wait to see what God's going to do. I can't wait to see how God is going to share his goodness and his mercy one more time as we share in God's word, as we sup and dine on the word of God today. Come on, lift up holy hands and repeat Psalm 27, one with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord in here. Come on, bless him. Continue to bless the Lord as I pray. God, we're thanking you today. We're thanking you and we're blessing you and we're praising your holy name, God, for all that you're about to do in this place, God. All that you're about to do in this place, God. We're trusting and believing that somebody's life is going to be changed today forever. God, we're wholly leaning on your word to deliver us. We're wholly leaning, leaning on your word to fill us one more time. We're wholly leaning on you, God, to lead us, God, into higher heights and deeper depths in our relationship with you through a preach word today. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, bless us as we go forth in this worship experience. Show up and show out. Have your way. God, do whatever it is you want to do, however it is you want to do it. Help us to speak truth to power. Help us to speak the unadulterated truth of your gospel to someone, anyone. God, that this world might be shaken and changed in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Well, I thank you for joining us again today. Uh, it is a wonderful time to be in the Lord. Uh, it is always a pleasure to be able to gather in Jesus' name and to preach the unadulterated truth of the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. Now more than ever, here in this dying world, we need to lean and depend on God and we need to fall into the word, dive deeper into the word, grow and mature through the word as God's kingdom 
continues to sprout and grow here on earth. I want to welcome my son Gilbert to come now to for formally welcome you uh, in uh, his own special way. Come on, Gilbert. Three, two, one. Good morning and welcome to Christ our Redeemer and me church. We're serving Christ and the community. We thank God for you worshiping with us and pray that today's message blesses you. We worship here every Sunday at 10 a.m. and have Transformational Wisdom Wednesdays each week at 7 p.m. via Facebook Live. We pray that when the invitation to Christ is given that you'll consider joining us here at Christ Our Redeemer. As always, be sure to like, share, and follow our Facebook page. God bless each of you today. Well, praise the Lord, and thank you, son, for welcoming our visitors and viewers. I, I uh, take pleasure in knowing that my son is working here by my side here at Christ our Redeemer, uh, staying close to the Lord in relationship with the Lord, staying close to his earthly dad, and uh, staying close to me as we endure together and endeavor to grow together in Christ. Uh, we only have a few announcements this week. Uh, the first one is, as usual, uh, we want you to join us for prayer on Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, this is a corporate prayer where we come together, uh, not only here at Christ Our Redeemer, but we come together with other uh, members of other churches, especially Living Water Amy Church and staff at Virginia. This prayer, this corporate prayer is open to everyone. So we pray that you'll join us, that you'll take 10 or 15 minutes out of your schedule just so that we can come together and pray. If, if, if there ever was a time we needed to pray, now is the time. You see the dial-in number uh, as well as the access code on your screen. I pray that you'll join us in prayer. Uh, I pray that you'll pray with us, that you'll come together with us, pray, uh, and continue to lift up prayer uh, as not only a resource and tool, but as a righteous vehicle of us communing with God, communicating with God, hearing from God, and sharing uh, our what's on our hearts and minds with God as we come together corporately in prayer. And then uh, this Wednesday uh, night at 7 p.m., we'll have our Wisdom Wednesday uh, topic discussion. Uh, we're going to begin a new um, topic discussion called uh, True Treasure, True Treasure. Uh, and we're praying that we'll be begin that topic discussion this Wednesday. Uh, you know, here at Christ Our Redeemer, we typically have four foundational pillars for which we teach around or have uh, subject matter experts come in to talk around faith, family, fitness, and finance. Uh, we've been in the era or, or the pillar of fitness uh, through the month of December and here in the month of January. We're beginning anew as we talk about our faith uh, and building on our faith. And then we'll move into our finances pretty soon. So this is a, um, a a study, if you will, that may become a series, not quite sure, but it's going to be around uh, true treasure, what it means when we say true treasure. Well, we thank you so very much for uh, taking the time out to listen to our announcements. And with that, it is time to give. Hallelujah. Speaking of treasure, it is time to give. How many of you know that it is a blessing, a true blessing to be able to give? How many of you know that God gives you everything, gives us everything so that we can get back into God's church, so we can get back into God's house where there might be resources for the people in need, for the community in need, for the world at large in need? We are blessed to be able to give here at Christ our Redeemer, and I pray that you're feeling blessed to be able to give. All God requires is that we give cheerfully, that we give eagerly, that we give willingly. In other words, God asks that we have a heart for giving, that we understand who it is and uh, who gives us the gifts to be able to give back to others, whether it be our time, whether it be our talents, or whether it be our treasure. At this moment, we're asking that you give of your treasure back here at Christ our Redeemer to sow into this ministry. How many of you know that when you sow cheerfully, knowing who the true treasure is, God is our true treasure, that God blesses it. Only God can multiply the blessings upon what is sown. The word says when you sow a seed, 
that you will, uh, when you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. When you sow uh, bountifully, you reap bountifully. The reason that happens is because God multiplies the blessings. God multiplies the blessings. Here at Christ our Redeemer, you can give one of four ways. You can give by cash out. You can give by givelify. You can give by tithely. Or you can give by the United States Postal Service. You should see those uh, means of giving on your screen. But what we need to understand is it's most of all when we give. Not only does God bless us, because of our obedience in giving, God blesses the offering. God blesses the tithe. God blesses the resources. God blesses the seed that we plant and sow here at Christ our Redeemer by multiplying it 30, 60, 100 fold. Because God is the only one that can do it. And we thank God for the harvest that's about to take place here at Christ our Redeemer for a great and mighty harvest that's going to be showered down into this ministry as God showers down blessings upon not only the gift, but the givers as well. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for the time. We thank you for the resources being shared here at Christ our Redeemer, that we might be a blessing uh, here on earth to those in need, God, that your kingdom would come and as your kingdom come, God, we would show love even through our giving to be a blessing to those who have not. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing the tithe, the offering, as well as the giver, God, and those who are tithing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that your principles hold true. God, whether we're tithing a dollar or a million dollars, the same principle holds true that if we are faithful in our tithe, if we are obedient, to bring the meat into the storehouse, bring our resources into the storehouse that you promised, you've promised to bless us. And we stand firm on your principles as well as your promises in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again. With that, our scripture uh, for today's focus uh, is from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16. That is Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. And here reads God's word. From the New Living Translation, it reads this way. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. After the sermonic selection by Sister Citibank, let us journey and grow together as I preach from the sermon title and subject, we are necessary. You are necessary. We are necessary. And you are necessary. Come on, Sister Citibank. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty, yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. Oh, praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Oh, praises be to the King. opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk once again. I have been struggling all week with what God has wanted to share in this sermonic moment, in this preaching moment. I have struggled and wrestled with this text that God is having me to preach from this Sunday. This text about the salt, this text about the light. I have struggled to understand what God has wanted to share through this scripture. And if I'm honest with you, I've preached from this scripture before. And in going back to it, I had several questions for God concerning what is God saying to us today? Let us pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to preach this word once again. Be to and through me as only you can so that your people might be blessed. Hide me behind your cross. God, do whatever it is you want to do as you move us, shake us, and transform us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. I've preached from this text before. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, what with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set 
on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light, your light, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. As I pondered what the Lord would have me preach about this Sunday, I stumbled upon my first sermon from this text, which was entitled, You Still Got Flavor. One of the first sermons I preached was, You Still Got Flavor. From this text, it came this sermon, and, 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 and I struggled. I began to ask myself questions about what God was truly saying today from this text. I began to ask God, why, why would God say that we are the salt of the earth? What was it about salt that God wanted us to share or that God wanted to share with us today? from this text. I struggle. I struggle for several days trying to understand what the Lord was saying. I was perplexed about what God was trying to say. And then God had me begin to think about the quality of salt. Salt is naturally created. Salt is, uh, in, in its natural form, is it's coarse. It's rough on its edges. It's it's a crystalline mineral as we know it as rock salt or halite. Some of you are using uh, a form of rock salt or some type of halite uh, as you now clear ice and snow from your sidewalks and driveways. So salt is present uh, in vast quantities, especially in seawater where it is the main mineral constituent of the seas. The open ocean has about 35 grams or 1.2 ounces of solid salts per liter, a salinity of about 3.5%. Salt is essential for life in general, and saltiness is one of the basic human taste, especially in our community, black and brown, people love salt. It's something that that uh, food producers know when they will season foods specifically with certain types of salt seasoning because they know our taste buds are geared towards those salts. And, 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 and here it is, Jesus references salt and points to its importance uh, uh, during the time. The fact that Jesus is, is utilizing salt as a reference point really tells us how important salt was, especially during the time when Jesus walked the earth. Roman legions were sometimes paid in salt. Hence the word salary comes from the Latin root of the word salt. It was of high value to ancient Hebrews and the Greeks and the Romans and the Byzantines and the Hittites and other people of antiquity. Salt is mentioned in the Bible over 35 times. One of these mentions is uh, when Lot's wife, who was turned into a pillar of salt, turned back and looked at the destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis 19, 26, you see these cities were destroyed and you see Lot's wife turning back, being turned into a pillar of salt. When the judge Abimelech destroyed the city of Sechem, he is said to have sown salt on it, probably as a curse or on anyone who would re-inhabit it, according to the book of Judges in chapter 9 and verse 45. The book of Job contains the first mention of salt as a condiment in Job 6.6. 6. Our scriptural reference today finds Jesus delivering the Sermon on the Mount, teaching us as his people, teaching us as 
his followers, teaching us so that we might come to understand what it means to be sons and daughters of our heavenly father, God. Teaching us what it means to be a part of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Our, uh, uh, our, our teaching from the Sermon on the Mount lets us know that as sons and daughters that we are blessed people, blessed in spirit because we need God, blessed as we mourn and are comforted by God, blessed as his humble followers who uh, shall inherit the earth, blessed as because we hunger and thirst for justice, blessed because we're created and, and, and in God's image, and, and we'll call, uh, God creates in us a, a clean heart uh, or, or pure hearts. Blessed because uh, we are peacemakers for God. God has given us his peace and called us his children. Blessed because we're persecuted for doing right and trying to live righteously and the kingdom of heaven is ours. And Jesus does something unusual as he begins utilizing teachings about salt and light in what uh, is referred to as the similitudes. A similitude means the quality or state of being similar to something, a, a comparison, a likeness, or a shadow of something. And then it dawned on me. It dawned on me as I sat quietly and soaked in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a sauna. It, it, it dawned on me what God is saying to us today in the references of salt and light. It dawned on me that the Lord wants someone to know today that we are necessary. God wants someone to know today that you are necessary. I don't know who God is having me to speak to, but throughout this world, whoever's hearing this message, I don't know who it is that God wants me to remind that you are necessary. Somebody has been languishing in their thought process. Somebody has been languishing in their understanding of who they are. Someone has been languishing and, and, and depressed about life. But God wants you to know that you are necessary. No matter what you've been going through, you are necessary. No matter how many times you've fallen or failed in life, you are necessary. As a matter of fact, you are one of one. There's no one like you. God created you this way. Think about it. There's no one else like you on planet Earth. No one else has your DNA. No one else has your fingerprints. No one else has your personality. No one else has what God created in your genetic makeup to bring to bear to the kingdom of heaven here on Earth. No one is like you. Like the light of the world, you are necessary. We are necessary. And you are certainly necessary. This first point is showing that we are necessary. Proving that you are necessary. Like the salt of the earth is necessary, we are necessary. You are necessary. We are people rich in flavor, significance, and culture. These are our natural characteristics and heritage in which God created us. We, like the salt of the earth, we've been Crafted by God to be necessary. Look at who God created you to be. If you are a person of color, black and brown, or brown, you, you, you the reality is all of us come from African, uh, African culture. But if you are a black 
uh, person in America or in Nigeria or somewhere else in the world, in Haiti, wherever you are, you are part of the African diaspora. And, and, and God created you and I to drive world culture when at, wherever we are with our look and with our rhythm and with our style and our, our, our rhyme and our language. With, with black culture permeates society through music and song and through art and expression and through dress and style and through hairstyles uh, and, and, and so many facets of us as a people. God created us this way in a natural sense. This is how God created us with natural characteristics and, and a heritage in which we have been born into. And this culture permeates society through all of its expressions. It is also noted uh, in, in, in important facets of life, such as the creation of math and sciences that, that these came out of Africa. These came out of people of color. The, 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 these facts were found by the Greeks in Egypt and adopted in, Greece, in Greek culture as far back as 600 BC. Simply put, we are necessary. We, from a natural perspective, we, and we come from a heritage of people who created the maths and the sciences. We come from a heritage of people who have rhythm and rhyme. We come from a heritage of people who have styles and, and dress that are different from everyone else. We come from a heritage of people who have a culture that impacts and permeates the world. I mean, think about it. Have you ever attended uh, a, a, a funeral procession in New Orleans and, and seen how it, the celebration of life is so much different than anywhere else. Have you ever attended a, a, a training bereavement sermon service? Uh, uh, one in which a, a, a native of Trinidad is being celebrated, their life is being celebrated. It's a true celebration of life, complete with steel drums and dancing or winding a uh, national pride waving of the flag of Trinidad, gospel songs in traditional Trini, Trini style, laughter, and so many testaments of, to life and life more abundant. I had the honor some years ago, it's been over three to five years now of attending a friend of mine, Reverend Keith Warner's mother, uh, Mother Warner, her, her bereavement service. It was unlike any service, bereavement service or celebration of life that I've ever experienced in my life. The entire church came to life as we celebrated Mother Woman. The service was literally, the service literally changed my perspective of who we are as a people. With warm, what a warm and inviting people we are. Even in death, we celebrate life differently. And, 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 and maybe you've never experienced these types of uh, celebrations of life and from, from uh, a, a service in New Orleans where there's horns and sounds and drums and, uh, and, and, and dance. And, or maybe you've never experienced a homegoing service or celebration uh, of, a, of a, a Trini style uh, homegoing celebration of service. So maybe maybe you've never had that experience. So let me bring it a little closer to home for some of you. Uh, how about our beloved brother? Uh, maybe you can remember this, uh, brother uh, Don Cornelius. Don Cornelius and the Soul Train. So do, do you remember the dance styles of the Soul Train dancers? I remember getting up on Saturday morning and couldn't wait to see the dress of the dancers. Couldn't wait to see this, the, the new dance moves that they were going to uh, create, they literally create on the show. I couldn't wait to hear the sounds of rhythm and blues as the guests came on stage and, and showed out with their gifts and talents. I couldn't wait to see 
the different dance styles of the soul trained dancers and how they're dressing their hairstyles and, uh, and, and how they were literally driving the culture from week to week. Man, what the music and the sounds of the musical guests were just off the chain, off the charts. I mean, can't you, can't you envision yourself going down the soul train line, getting your groove on with the latest dance moves? And, 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 and even today, and if, and if you, uh, and, and if I were to give you the chance that the, the show always ended on love, peace, and soul. That's right. Love, peace, and soul. You would know what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. Maybe that's not your experience. Maybe, maybe I'm a child and product of the 60s. And maybe you don't remember that. Some of our young, young adults and, and youth are looking at me strange and they don't understand what I'm talking about. But how about our youth and young adults? How about the culture of today? Look at the uniqueness of their styles. Look, think about the uniqueness of their vernacular and, and, and their language. Most of us of my generation may not understand it without one of our youth or younger, young adults sharing with us what they're saying, how they're expressing themselves. Think about their, the styles and colors of hair that you see mixed in throughout our society and our young, uh, in our youth and young adults. Think about the changes that they're sharing with us through their own individual expression and how they're impacting the culture. Ink is a big thing now uh, for our youth and young adults. Uh, this is not new. It may seem new because they're expressing it in their own way, but it's truly not new. The piercings are not new. The hairstyles are different, but they're not new. Hallelujah. But 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 no one else can do what our youth and young adults do. No one else can share in the way that they share. No one else can say what they say or do what they do and or, or say it how they say it. No one else can. Hallelujah. We are necessary. You are necessary, youth and young adults. Okay, I, I hear you saying, Ruffin, where you going with this? You, you must have lost your mind. Uh, uh, where's, where's he going with this? All I'm saying is that we are necessary as a people. All I'm saying to you is, and what God is sharing with us today, is that you are necessary as a person. We bring a uniqueness of what God has created in us as a people to reach the disenfranchised, to reach the poor, to reach the sick, to reach the downtrodden people of this world. God does the miraculous through us, in us. Jesus is preaching to you today from the mount, telling you that you are necessary. Secondly, 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 we must recognize that we're a people of God's light and love. Not only do our natural characteristics and traits define us, but more importantly, our spiritual character and traits define us even more. When we accepted Jesus Christ, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you were made brand new. We were made brand new, baptized into one body with one spirit, by one spirit. We, we, we took on kingdom characteristics. Hallelujah. We received the spirit of God, which bears fruit in us. The fruit of love, the fruit of joy, the fruit of peace, long suffering, the fruit of gentleness, the fruit of goodness, the fruit of faith, the fruit of meekness, and the fruit of temperance. They make us necessary. Against such qualities, against such spiritual fruit, there is no law. Hallelujah. We are a people of God's light and love. And we are necessary. You are necessary. Think about all that God has brought us through as a kingdom people. 
<laughs> think about all that God has done in your life as a kingdom believer, as a son or daughter of God, bringing you through to this very moment. How else can we explain our survival as a people through colonization, through colonialism, through slavery, through apartheid, through Jim and Jane Crow, through racism, through discrimination, through unjust policies and laws. How else can we explain our survival? We are children of God's life and his love. And we are necessary. You are necessary. Talk to me, Dr. King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can drive out darkness. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do this. We are necessary. You are necessary, kingdom son. You are necessary, kingdom daughter. You are necessary, kingdom man. You are necessary, kingdom woman. You are necessary. We are necessary. We, 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 we are the spiritual and social consciousness of the world. Our plight, our, our endurance as a people of African descent, the, 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 it's intricately linked to other people of this world who are downtrodden, disenfranchised, and look down upon who are oppressed, those, those, those who are oppressed throughout the world, we cannot forget the hungry in India no more than we can overlook our brothers and sisters who are disenfranchised, hungry, and homeless here throughout the United States. This is what Dr. King pointed out to us when he stated that we must have a worldview. We are interconnected as a world. He used the reference of, of Bob Hope and a flight that, that you could hit. And before you could get the up out, you could fly now from the United States to England or some other place. He, he, he used references of, of Bob Hope in, in, in hope of connecting the dots with people so that they would understand that we are necessary, that so that they would understand that you are necessary. We must recognize and shine our light throughout the world. We must speak of love. We must speak love and truth to power to ensure that people's lives are not taken for granted. We can't neglect the atrocities and killings, uh, the killing of innocent in Palestine and Gaza any more than we can neglect the oppression and the killing of innocents in Georgia. We can't ignore the atrocities and killing of innocents in the Sudan any more than we can ignore the atrocities and the oppression of the, and the killing of innocents in South Carolina. Think about it. Hundreds of billions of dollars are spent on defense. Over a trillion dollars are spent on the national security here in the United States. The national security apparatus, including the Department of Defense, including intelligence departments, including the black budgets, including all of these things in the name of defense. And, and I'm not suggesting that defense isn't a good thing. I'm just saying, and, and, and I'm imagining with my spiritual eyes, that if we took one-tenth, hallelujah, of that trillion plus dollars a year that are spent on defense and the national security programs and, and, and think about what we could do with it, we could solve hunger here in the United States and probably around the world. We could solve homelessness here in the United States especially, and we could start to work on it around the world. Think about it. Think about how many children could be sheltered? How many children could be educated free with enrichment programs? That was the point that Dr. King, King made in the 60s. That's what he was driving home when he was killed. He was killed because he was necessary. We are necessary. And this is the same message that Jesus was sharing on the mount with us. This is the same message that Jesus is driving home to us today. And, and, and that's why he was killed. 
He was murdered on Calvary's hill. He was crucified for your sake and mine because he was necessary. We are necessary. You are necessary. This was the point that Dr. King and others draw. We're driving home in the 60s. This is the message that Jesus preaches from the, the Sermon on the Mount. This is the message that Jesus is teaching us today, that we are necessary like salt and light. We are necessary. This is the message that you are charged with letting the dying world know. Blessed are you, the poor in spirit, the peacemakers, the humble, the merciful, and the pure at heart. We are the peacemakers. Talk to me, James. Those who are peacemakers plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. We are necessary. You are necessary. All you got to do is look around you and see that the empires of the world must fall. I, I, I don't want to sound dark and dim, but they must fall. Anytime there's evil permeated throughout a kingdom, it must fall. The kingdom of heaven has to come. And it comes through you and I, sons and daughters of the Most High. It comes through you and I as ambassadors of the kingdom of God. It comes through you and I as children of the Most High God, speaking true to power. Because you are necessary. We are necessary. I know. I was getting late and time is getting short, so let me share this last point with you. What good are we if we lose our flavor, if we lose the necessary ingredients that God has created us to be? Before we were formed in our mother's womb, God gave us characteristic traits, gave us purpose. What good are we? if we don't live out that purpose? What good are we if we have the light and love of God within us, but hide it within our homes, hide it within the walls of the church, hide it within ourselves? What good are we if we don't stand on the promises and the principles and the truths of God? You can't hide your uniqueness and that which God created you to bring to life. You are necessary. We are necessary. In these perilous times, when folks want to roll back the clocks to periods of immense hatred and discriminatory practices and in times that they thought their country was great, we must come together in unity, shine brightly, speak truth to power. In times like these, where people want to shut others out because they want to hoard resources from themselves, they'll say to these individuals that you are an immigrant. They'll say to these people that you are coming, too many of you are coming. You are trying to live off of us. They ignore the fact that these people have been subjugated, their families, their mothers, their, fa their, their fathers, their grandfathers, their foreparents have been subjugated. And, 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 and the wealth of European nations and here in the United States and others have been built on their backs. They, they want to ignore that and now hoard these, what, the, the, this wealth to themselves, not thinking about the common man. But you and I are God's children. You and I are those who share in light and in love. You and I are necessary like the salt of the earth. You and I are necessary to speak truth in love to these individuals who are hoarding resources. Those who would turn a blind eye to a starving child. Those who would turn a blind eye to the nakedness of those who come in me. How can we pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness with these dark issues, stripping men of women, when men, women, and children of their humanity? How can you and I experience life 
when we're faced with choosing between homelessness and medical bills? How can you or I pursue liberty when we're financially bound and have the weight of debt around our neck and our basic necessities outweigh our monthly income? I'm telling you that these are dark days. These are situations where our light and love must shine forth. How can we find liberty when we're faced with an injustice system that consistently and unfairly judges people based on their economic means and where they come from? How can we know the way forward as a people when our past and relevant history is being revised or erased? Brothers and sisters, we are necessary. You are necessary. My brothers and my sisters, the harvest is great. Can't you see it? That the harvest is great. The world is literally dying all around us. These empires that have built themselves up over the, over the past few hundred years, over the last few centuries, are dying. They're dying because they have been based on and rooted in evil, and they are continuing to perpetuate evil. But you and I must bring light and love in these situations and we must be like the salt of the earth because we are necessary to share truth to power. We must be laborers of the God's vineyard and we're necessary. You are necessary as you pour out your unique flavor and allow the fruits of the spirit to flow from you. As you pour out the light and love of God today, Speak truth to power. Let's speak truth, period. Hallelujah. Live in righteousness. Let the fruits of God's spirit flow from you. Love your neighbor. And yes, even your enemy. Help a brother or a sister or family in need. Go out to every hood, to every hamlet, to every hospital. Visit the sick and shut in the imprisoned. Lay hands on the sick. And in the name of Jesus, call, call out the name of Jesus for their healing. Speak life to dead situations so that people might be revived and renewed, so that they might be refreshed, that they might get up from the dead situation and live again. Lay hands, lay hands on the sick, feed the hungry, help the homeless, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked. Let the world know that Jesus lives because he lives in you. Show up and pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send more ladies. Reach out in, in, in hopes of helping others and, 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 and pray, and, and God will use you. God has shared that he'll tell you what to say and what to do in times of your reaching out. God has promised to give you the words to say. Greater shall you do because you are necessary. We are necessary. You are necessary in the name of Jesus. God has called us forth like salt. God has called us forth like the light of the world. What good would we be if we lose the qualities and characteristics that God has given us, the traits that God has given us. What good would we be if we don't use the fruit of the spirit that God has given us through confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? What good would we be if we didn't use those things? That's why we are necessary. That's why you are necessary. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done and is doing in and through us. Greater is coming because you and I are necessary. We thank God for the word. We thank God for this lesson today. The doors of God's church are open. God is waiting on you today to realize that you are necessary, that you are called to be a kingdom dweller. You're called to be an ambassador for Christ, a son or daughter of God. And it starts with relationship. If you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, won't you come today? Come on, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Come on, believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead so that you might also be raised from death. Beginning today, that you may be made brand new and transformed as a new being in Christ. Come on today, rededicate your faith. Come on today, rededicate your faith. Walk in your role and responsibility as a disciple, as an ambassador for Christ. Come on, join the church today so that when we all get together, we can sing and shout the victory. Come on, join the church today so that we can come together knowing that we are necessary so that you can understand that you are necessary. Come on today, give your life to Christ, rededicate your faith, join the church, click on the link in the comment section, fill out the information. I'm going to call and pray with you. Give your life to Christ today. Hear me and hear me clearly. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's going to come to an end. But the kingdom of heaven shall remain. The word of God shall remain. The people of God shall remain. Stand with us today. Give your life to Christ. More important than anything else is this relationship that you'll share. Click on that link today. I'll call and pray with you. Whether you're joining the church, rededicating your faith, or more importantly, giving your life to Christ, I'll pray with you. Come on, let's pray now. God, we thank you for what you've shared through rock, through salt, through light. We thank you, God, that we stand on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ who taught these things to us from the mount. And we pray that we clearly hear Jesus today, still speaking, still preaching, to our soul, still teaching us that we are necessary, that we hear clear, that, that you clearly hear Jesus today individually to know that you are necessary. No matter how dark the day, you are necessary. No matter how challenging the times, you are necessary. Child of God, you are necessary. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen again. Well, Saints, I am encouraged. I pray that you are as well. This is a powerful word. It took me a minute to get it. And I pray that you got it now and understand like the salt of the earth, like the light that God created, you are necessary. We are necessary. Come on, let's have our final prayer and get out of here. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling flat on our faces and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen, amen, and amen again. Go in peace and enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you.